Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe, that's a you know, good good overview of what we do, part of the center. And my name is Harbans Lal. I'm located here in Portland, Oregon, as an environmental engineer for the National, National Water Quality Quantity Team. And I want to thank everyone who is attending this conference today. And I will be covering, along with me, is Brooks, who will be, you know, giving a sort of a case study scenarios how he has been, he has used this tool, Water Quality Index. So let's get started. And the, the very, here is the outline of what I will be talking about in today's presentation. First of all, I'd like to take a second, a few minutes to define what index is and how is, what are its common uses. Then come back and try to define the, some of the water quality parameters and how complex they are for a common person to understand. Why in that sense the people have been working on what they call water quality index. And finally, you know, then I will jump into what I call water quality index for agriculture runoff. Give a sort of a short justification why we develop it, different components, how the things is calculated with a quick overview and demo of the actual tool. Then we will come back and sort of talk about some of the current and potential uses this tool has and with a case study from California by Brooks. And finally, some of the concluding remarks and future plans, if time permits. So, you know, we all, what is an index? You know, I mean, if you look at the dictionary word, the index is defined as a dimensionless number that combines multiple variables into a single value representing the overall condition or measure of something, the system or operations or something. And traditionally, this index approach has been very intensively be used for financial markets and other systems. And typical example I can give you is is the you know, Dow Jones Dow Jones Industrial Average, Nasdaq Happiness Index, and all this. You know, you know, we when we get up in the morning, we all look for what how the market has done, and that representation comes to Dow Jones Index Average or Nasdaq. You know, why do we use this? I think the one reason we use indices are basically they are easy to understand and follow. Like when we like we talked about the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, you know, it gives you an overall representation how market is doing, but does not give you any clue of how indi individual industry or individual company is doing. But we gain a lot of information just by looking at the index. <laughs> so, you know. When we talk about water quality, water quality is a complex representation of multiple factors. You know, it's, it's a pretty involved process and includes, you know, includes parameters such as dissolved oxygen, pH, turbidity, BOD, biological oxygen demand, and chemical oxygen demand, et cetera, et cetera and many more. The main thing which bothers me, bother me for developing this water quality in this is was, you know, all these parameters which are representing the water quality are very expressed in different units and with different magnitude in numbers of ranges. Okay. Bottom line, you know, they are very hard to understand and follow by common person, non-professional. So there has been a felt need. People have recognized the need for, you know, coming up some, some sort of a simple way to represent the water quality. And that's how water quality index was introduced. 
And this concept is not a new one. It's not something which has I have we have introduced. This concept of water quality index had been used by many state, national, and international agencies, including U.S. EPA, Oregon DEQ, India, Canada, FAO of United Nations. I just want to share, you know, the story how we got involved into it. About two and a half years back, you know, NRCS headquarters gave us a task to come up how NRCS conservation practices have been able to reduce the nitrogen and phosphorus loading to to water resources in U.S. water bodies to U.S. A team of us from water quality team, you know, got together, reviewed some of the NRCS literature, and also looked at some of the you know factors which go in evaluating the effects of water quality uh, as part of conservation practices. And while we were doing this work, which was pretty well appreciated by headquarters. Somehow, I came to sort of feeling that, you know, it's even just two factors, nitrogen and phosphorus, are becoming pretty involved for even a professional like us. Is there a simple way which can express the water quality? And I basically thought that I, I coined a word called water quality index. And as usual, you know, I was pretty excited about this new new terminology or new, you know, coin words, but, you know, as we all know, these days Google, Mr. Google is knows everything, so I wanted to go and search if there is something like water quality index already existing, and when I went to Google and I searched for it and there was a bunch of literature available on water quality index. So, what is a water quality index? You know, again, it's a dimensionless number that combines the values of multiple water quality parameters such as dissolved oxygen, pH, BOD, COD, nutrient and temperature, etc., into a single value by what they call normalized subjective ranking curves. Okay. And there are various more, you know, when I was doing this review work, I found a number of models which have been developed around the world. But these, all these models for water quality index was being done for the water resources like rivers, streams, and lakes. And just to solve, because it became pretty exciting for me to under, to learn that the word which I was thinking, which I coined, a lot of literature existed about that thing, that topic. I did a review paper on on this water quality index and published it in what the Water Efficiency Magazine, you know, Water Efficiency Magazine published a, what I call Introduction to Water Quality Index. And this particular paper summarized all the pay, all the models, many of the models which have been used or are available for water quality index. But in this review work, what I found was that there was no paper or there was no reference to water quality index for agriculture runoff. And that's what we ex got excited us to get into something to do where indices for water quality that runs off from agricultural field. So this is a review paper. If somebody wants you know, the link, uh, you can search on Water Efficiency Magazine with this word or send me a request and I will forward you the link for this paper which we have available on this ma in this magazine. Now, the question comes, why do we want to double, why did we want to double up the water quality index for agricultural runoff? You know, if we try to look at the what agricultural you know integration of agriculture with water, agriculture needs water and pollutes water. Okay. 
So if you overall, if you do some searching of the literature, you will find as much as 70% of U.S. freshwater sources are utilized for agriculture. Again, on the flip side of the coin, if you look at the sources of pollutant, which are coming to some of the water resources, lakes, estuaries, and rivers, or streams, up to 70-80% of those pollutants are, are coming from non-point sources, which are again related to agriculture. So, water, agriculture needs water and pollutes water. So, some way to quantify that pollution factor which can give us some sort of a ranking of how water quality of an agriculture runoff is becomes pretty important. Again, just, you know, we all know, we are well aware that how much NRCS spends money on different conservation projects to improve water quality. And this is a simple chart as much as $6.2 billion budgets which NRCS spends on different conservation program to improve and one of the factors they are looking for is to improve water quality. Furthermore, NRCS is always looking for tools which can evaluate the effectiveness of their conservation practices in improving this, improving the water quality. Okay, and if you do the this, you know, sort of searching or some literature from NRCS, you will find that these tools can be broadly divided into three categories. What I I call them as a planning and assessment tool, which are simple ranking tool for different conservation practices in terms of their effectiveness on water, improving water quality. The second type of tools, what we call modeling, real models, like Russell 2 or C, or C program, which use Apex model to evaluate the, the effectiveness of NRCS conservation practices on improving water quality. More recently, NRCS has got into what they call one activity called edge of the field monitoring. In this case, the NRCS funding all the equipment and the operational cost to farmers to do edge of the field monitoring of agriculture runoff. Now, when you look at these three tools, I can say these tools are either too generic you know, like CPPE is very generic, just one one ranking fits to, you know, for the entire nation for conservation practices, or they are too expensive. For example, the edge of the field monitoring, the initial data shows that NRCS, you know, we need the cost of installing the equipment for monitoring can range anywhere from 50,000 to 70,000 in addition to the operation and maintenance and you know taking the actual records and then testing in one testing them in the lab so based upon this NRCS needed some you know we needed a, some sort of a tool that uses site specific information and incorporates multiple factors which influence the water quality with least cost. And that's why, you know, we got into, thus, you know, we realized that we need to have some simple tool which incorporates all these factors and we can, and we got started on this tool about two and a half years back. Another reason why we got started on this tool was, you know, about when we published our first paper on the review work of the Water Quality Index, and I shared that paper with my NRCS colleagues, they said, that's a great job, but 
NRCS is not interested in monitoring the water resource quality at the river streams. We don't do that job. We are more interested in water quality, what is coming out from agriculture field, and how it's being impacted by our conservation practices. So that got us started into the project. And what we started doing was we started reviewing a lot of literature on different components which could be constituted into the water quality index for agriculture runoff. And we started contacting multiple disciplinary experts to seek their advice in terms of how different different factors could be ranked and you know and incorporated into a single tool. So again we you know, we took the same liberty. We started working on this tool, and first thing we just a piece of paper. We saw, I outlined some of the factors which will go into the such an index, and again we published that paper in the Water Quality Index, Water Efficiency Magazine, which is also still available if you want to search on that. So here is the snaps. It's a screenshot. Uh, of water quality index is clean. It's a one pager, very simple tool, and has multiple components in it. And just you interact with the with the tool by selecting your options by pull down menus. Okay. So that's how it works, and I don't want to go into much of the detail at this screenshot, but because we will have a real live demo quickly. And let's see, continue on this. So what what is Water Quality Index for Agriculture Runoff? What it is, is a tool for ranking runoff water from agriculture field from 1 to 10, 10 being the best. Okay, like I said, if you are getting between 7 and 8, you are doing pretty good. It's a simple, very easy to use, a web-based system, web, web, web system which you can access it anytime, anybody can access it and run the, with this tool. It uses multiple field characteristics and management factors, including you know soil type, soil pH, pH, or organic matter, K factor, all those factors you will see being used for characterizing the soil characteristics, and the management factors include nutrient management, pest management, tillage, and all conservation practices and irrigation. All these factors are basically ranked, okay, for we have a factor called weighting, weighting factor. Weighting factor you can sort of assign low or high weightage to one or more components and that will basically give you adjustment for your local preferences. In addition, the tool has a basic, you know, bunch of site-specific weather data, where, which you can select going the from your state to county to weather location near your county, and also the tool provides the possibility of adjusting, customizing your weather data if you have better information for your site. So, like I said, the components of this uh, water quality index tool includes fields, physical and sensitivity factors like slope, pH, and slope, organic matter content, K factor, and all soil factors which influence the soil erosion and runoff. Newton factors, we try to combine all four R's which are important for nutrient management. Tillage factors, how intensive tillage operations you get, you know, the field is going under. Pest management with ranging from IPM to, you know, regular pest control by applying pesticides. Irrigation and drainage management and conservation practices. 
So how how does it like I said, there are multiple four key components: the shield factor, nutrient management, pest fact, pest management, and tillage management. Many of these components have multiple factors built into it. So the basically how it works, you you select the factors within a component and then you get a ranking for those factors which are combined into one weighting for a component. Then it ranks and combines factors within a component. And then it ranks and combines different components into an overall way, overall ranking or overall water quality index. So basically, you get water quality index number based upon the four key components, which are field factor, nutrient management factor, pest management, and tillage. And then the water quality index number of these two key factors can be adjusted whether your field is irrigated or what type of irrigation management you are doing or you have if you have a drainage tile drain system on your field. In addition to tile drain system and irrigation management, the tool also provides a bunch of conservation practices which you can incorporate in evaluating the effectiveness of your uh, on the water quality coming out of your field.